In this podcast, we're going to look at what are known as the major prophets in the Old Testament. It's no secret that there are lots of prophecies in the Bible, in the Old Testament and in the New. Most people think of the book of Revelation in the New Testament as the center of prophecy, and perhaps the book of Daniel in the Old Testament as the center of prophecy. But there were many other prophets as well, and it's important for us to realize that not all prophecy is about predicting the future. Much prophecy is about explaining what's already happened, and... um, speaking on behalf of God to human beings, not just about predicting the future. So when you hear about prophets and prophecy, don't just think about predictions. There's more to it than that. Um, The major prophets are considered to be Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel. Uh, A good part of this, of course, is because they wrote the longest books, and so their works are major compared to the minor prophets whose works are much shorter. Um, Also, of course, um, they had a much longer, each of them had a much longer history of prophetic ministry than the minor prophets did. Isaiah began his prophetic ministry somewhere around 740 BC. Isaiah 6 actually identifies the date as the year that King Uzziah died, and we know that date from historical records. So we can uh, identify Isaiah's beginning uh, pretty accurately. He was probably born somewhere around 760, which would have made him about 20 years old or so at the time of his call from God to start ministering. Um, It's quite a dramatic story in Isaiah 6, and um, um, you might want to go back and read about it. Um, I hope you will. Uh, Isaiah lived in Judah, which, as you may remember, is the southern kingdom. The two tribes in the southern kingdom constituted Judah. The ten tribes in the northern kingdom constituted what was usually referred to as Israel, although the name Israel could be applied to the whole country, north and south. Isaiah probably died about 700 B.C., and there is good evidence that he was actually murdered. He was not very popular, and we'll see why in a minute. Um, Some of the big ideas from Isaiah's uh, prophecies, from Isaiah's um, biblical book, which of course bears his name, um, Isaiah is is sometimes referred to as the gospel prophet. And uh, one of the reasons why is because he had a lot of good gospel things to say. And uh, much of what he said is associated with the story of Jesus, particularly with the Christmas story and the Easter story. For example, um, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us, comes from Isaiah. Um, So there's a great deal of um, prophecy about the coming of the Messiah and what he would do. Uh, in Isaiah's book. Um, also, the um, Easter story uh, comes out of, uh, has roots in Isaiah as well. Uh, for example, he was wounded for our transgressions with his stripes where he healed. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. That also comes out of Isaiah chapter 53. So, um, um, Isaiah has um, a lot of the rootedness that um, later bears fruit in the New Testament. Uh, Historically, this was a very exciting time. The Assyrian Empire was on the rise, and they were squeezing Israel, in fact, all their neighbors, and um, were pushing up against the borders, threatened to invade, threatened to destroy. Uh, Isaiah warned everybody that Assyria was actually a judgment from God because of their backsliding and their unfaithfulness and their rebellion against God. Um, uh, eventually, um, the Assyrian Empire would actually annihilate the ten northern tribes. Um, Isaiah's territory in the south, the land of Judah, would actually survive the Assyrian Empire, but only because of lots of political intrigue uh, and deals cut with uh, Assyria to pay them money and buy them off, also with Egypt to try and uh, form some kind of alliance, uh, working with Israel to try and again form a military alliance to resist. Um, Isaiah actually warned the people of Judah not to do that, that um, they were working against God uh, in trying to um, avoid the catastrophe that was the inevitable result for their sins. Instead, they should repent and they should turn to God, and uh, that would be much better for them than trying to resist militarily. 
Um, and uh, there was a reform that took place, and uh, there were several revivals and reformations that took place in Judah. And Judah did manage to avoid destruction, unlike Israel, the northern kingdom, which, as I said, ceased to exist. Um, somewhere around the same period of time, you have uh, Jeremiah's ministry. And uh, um, Jeremiah, again, uh, like Isaiah, more than 40 years in active ministry from about 626 B.C. to about 560 B.C. He also was in Judah in the southern kingdom. Uh, by the time of Jeremiah, the northern kingdom had already been destroyed by the Assyrians. He's a little later than Isaiah is. Um, and again, lots of warnings in Jeremiah just uh, about Israel or Judah's sinfulness and about the terrible things that they had done, their rebellions against God, their paganism, their false gods, their idolatry, their adultery, their fornications, their refusal to uh, obey God, and uh, all those terrible things that were, going, uh, that were going to happen to them were the result of their sinful rebellion. Uh, Jeremiah's ministry could actually be divided into two halves. He spent the first half of his ministry warning the Jews that their rebellion was going to bring destruction and urging them not to uh, continue along that pathway because it would lead to destruction and death. And then uh, he spent the second half of his ministry telling them basically it's too late now. God has made up his mind. Uh, he has judged you, and the destruction is going to come. There's nothing you can do to avoid it. Uh, just accept it as uh, a judgment from God and uh, learn from it. Um, as a result of both of these messages, he was hated, despised, persecuted. He was imprisoned. He was beaten. He was thrown into a cistern and left there for a long time. He was uh, denounced as a traitor. Um, Jeremiah had a terribly rough life. Um, he certainly deserved hazardous duty pay and, and never got it. <laughs>